Okay, hopefully that wasn't too bad. So number one, this room has a numinous energy. Whenever I see the word numinous, which is not very often, mind you, uh, except on maybe GRE stuff, and even on the GRE, it's not that often, I just like to think of a, a ghost. That's kind of like the first thing that pops in my brain. And of the five, which one best matches with a ghost? It's going to be D, spiritual. The water is most pellucid at this point. So what you can do on this one, which I don't normally recommend, if you look at a piece of this word, you'll see lucid. And whenever something is lucid or somebody speaks in a lucid manner, they're very clear. And so that's kind of just how I remember what this word means. Pellucid just means, you know, you can see through it. It's clear. Uh, it's not murky. Murky would be the opposite. So of the five, the best answer is going to be translucent. And really, I mean, if you if you look like it looks like they're sharing something here with the L-U-C. But again, that's a very dangerous game. And I don't recommend it usually. Um, and I'll just give you an example. Like take, for example, the word restive. You know, if you look at the word rest here, you might think it means sleepy or something. It actually means the opposite of that. So it's a pretty dangerous game. All right, number three, the book has a subtle tone. This is a pretty easy word, but if you look at the five choices, not as easy. Correct answer is going to be muted, you know, kind of like subdued, not very direct. You kind of have to look between the lines, you know, some, something like that. Number four, it was an exhilarating experience that I don't wish to repeat. So maybe this person doesn't like too much excitement in their lives. So the best choice is going to be thrilling. You know, it made the person feel excited, but not necessarily in a good way. Exhilarating could be uh, used in a positive sense, but at the same time, it could be used in a like, um, it almost like um, overwhelms your senses kind of thing like that. All right, let's look at the next page. Number five, his philosophy remains obscure. Um, pretty standard GRE fare here. You know, the words don't get much easier than this. This is just going to be B, unknown. The critic offered a superficial treatment of the play. Whenever we're talking about a critic, and whenever we're talking about a critic doing something superficially, that kind of means they're not really going deep into the play or deep into the story or providing a lot of context. So they're just scratching the surface, which is what superficial really means. It means the surface. Of the five, the best choice is cursory. Ted found the claim credible. Jerry loves this word credible. And I can, I'll just tell you some words you often see. You know, you often see the word credible. You often see the word incredible, which means you cannot believe it. You often see the word credulous. If someone is a credulous person, they believe everything easily. And then you'll see the word incredulous it means they don't believe things easily you'll see the word credulity which is the noun you know the noun of someone believing something uh, easily so this is a very popular gre word that you often see so the correct answer here is going to be he found it convincing which means he can believe it their efforts were exhaustive to exhaust something means to basically deplete it to use all of the resources or all of the energy so if you do something in an exhaustive manner, that means you're basically using every resource and every tool at your disposal in order to accomplish your goal. So of the five, the best choice is going to be thorough. Basically, you do a very kind of detailed, in-depth uh, treatment of what you're trying to do here. Number nine, the benefits were illusory. Again, you can just kind of use word word association here. Think about illusion. You know, illusion is something that appears to be true but is really not. So the best choice is going to be non-existent. Arturo neglected issues he considered extraneous. The way I remember this word is I think, okay, extra. If something's extra, I don't really need it and I can throw it away. So it's not really necessary. So I'm looking for a word that means not really necessary. The best answer is going to be D, immaterial. Now, before I kind of confuse you with this one, material, the noun, you know, like wood, cotton, whatever, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the material, the adjective. So if something is material to my concerns, that means it's relative or kind of I need it. Immaterial means not important, throw it away, irrelevant. Number 11, many people express their fervor for the product. So these people are very passionate about the product. C, the house was a little too Baroque for my taste. So Baroque was a time and period or a period in time 
in the past in which the design was kind of overly done, very extravagant, very intricate, very detailed. Of the five, best choice is going to be ornate. You'll notice in modern houses today, uh, or kind of like modern luxury, you don't really see much ornate design. It tends to be a little bit more um, simple, uh, higher quality stuff, not overly done. Kind of rooms feel a little bit more empty than maybe they did in the past. 13, I helped perpetuate the rumor. Um, if you perpetuate something, you basically don't let it die. You kind of keep it going. So the best answer is going to be E, sustain. The military often engages in covert operations. Whenever I think about covert, I just think about a spy, you know, someone who does something where they don't really want to be caught. So the best answer is E, stealthy. The critic wrote a scathing review of his mother's restaurant. Um, not a very good son, but maybe a good critic, an honest critic who doesn't let his relationship with his mother kind of color the way he writes this review. So scathing means kind of overly negative, very critical. So the best choice is going to be blistering. Much of her work has been a documentary, much of her work has a documentary feel to it. You know, in common speech, a documentary, documentary is a movie we watch, a movie about reality, um, the GRE likes to use the word documentary and document and record and record and chronicle in the sense that a person is not giving any of their own opinion or any of their own interpretation of it. They're just recording history or just recording the facts. So of these five choices, um, if you guys think about an archives, well, an archives is just a collection of documents. There's no like analysis or interpretation. So the best answer is going to be A, archival. GRE loves that kind of idea. That it's because it's the contrast to this idea that you interpret something or that there's some bias or prejudice there. 17, his novel is full of metaphorical references. You know, think about your high school English class, AP English. Best choice is going to be symbolic. Please do not be so overt, so obvious, so direct, so clear, so blatant. We must cultivate the rational part of our brains. The word rational actually comes from the word ratio, which is basically a number or two numbers that you can express as a fraction. So take, for example, you know, two to three. This is a ratio. I can express this as a ration or a ratio. And that's kind of where the root of this word comes, you know, kind of two to three. And back in the past, you know, Aristotle's time or whatever, you know, those guys, they thought that this was a very logical thing, right? But then you started throwing irrational numbers at them, you know, like the square root of two and pi. These numbers you cannot express as a ratio or a fraction, and it freaked everybody out, made everyone just go crazy. In fact, there's a story, I don't know if it's apocryphal, it probably is apocryphal, about, uh, I think it was either Plato or Aristotle, when he, when he discovered er um, irrational numbers, he, like, he threw somebody in the ocean or the water and drowned them as like punishment because he just couldn't handle it. And of course, during that time, they were using largely geometry. And so irrational number would come from, for example, you have a square, and this is one, and this is one. Well, what is this distance right here, right? If you figure out, you can use Pythagorean theorem, but you don't really need to use Pythagorean theorem. You could just use the 45, 45, 90 triangle. But anyway, what you get is, you know, one squared plus one squared, and that's going to equal, we'll call this C, c squared so you have you know two equals c squared which means c equals square root of two just kind of freaked everybody out kind of a good story uh so the best answer here is going to be analytical your work is largely feudal or futile there's like 20 different ways to pronounce this um when something's feudal or futile that basically means you know you're wasting your time you know you're not going to accomplish your mission here so the correct answer is pointless all right, we have 10 more. 21, Anika, Anika, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, is unusually lethargic today. She's very sluggish, very tired. Kwame struck a conciliatory tone. Conciliatory basically means you're trying to meet people in the middle. You're trying to make the argument go down. So the best answer is appeasing. Children often mimic, uh, ooh, ignore that, sorry about that. 
correct answer is C, imitate. Sarah somehow ended up in an in invidious position. This is one of those words you probably actually don't need to know. The, the, this is one of those words that would maybe separate, you know, kind of the 150s from the 160s or the high 160s. You don't really need to know it. It kind of means awkward or uncomfortable, especially if you're describing position. Correct answer is unpleasant. The manager countenance debate. I love this word because First of all, it looks like a noun, not a verb. So that's number one. And number two, this is just one of those words you really can't guess, at least I can't guess, and you just have to kind of memorize it. And what it means is tolerated or allowed. Our company is known for its Byzantine processes, very similar to this Baroque idea of kind of overcomplicated, you know, too many rules, too many processes, very difficult to learn. Best answer is complicated. Dan has an affinity for rock music. So does Dan like rock music? Does he hate rock music? Is he impartial? Is he worried about it? Correct answer is he likes it, fondness of. The theory compromise the theory is compromised by new evidence. This one here, another one of those words where the easier the word, the actual harder the definition. So in common speech, uh, compromise means to negotiate or to meet somebody in the middle. But on the GRE, to have something compromised means it's weakened or impaired in some manner. So the correct answer is B. All right, two more. The problem is rather diffuse. So this is actually a verb and an adjective. In this case, it's an adjective because it's coming after is. Uh, correct answer is it's spread out. So the best answer would be scattered. And then finally, wealthy individuals tend to be altruistic. Here is a good lesson that you cannot really use any of your preconceived notions about wealthy individuals to guess these questions correctly. Uh, you know, maybe you think arrogant or greedy or something like that, but no, we're just, what does altruistic mean? A person who is altruistic of the five, the best choice is going to be D, generous. So this was number 13 of our quizzes, so we now have 390 words. Hopefully I'll have a quiz number 14 out by next week. Until that time, good luck guys, and if you have any questions, shoot me an email. I'll do my best to reply.